Hello, and these are my picks for the 2020 MLB Major Awards. And my runner-up for AL Cy Young is Kenta Maeda of the Minnesota Twins. He was absolutely dominant for them. He had a no-hit bid that you're watching right here. Go through eight, if I can remember. With the Brewers, or against the Brewers. Last year with the Dodgers, he had a heck of a season, but I believe this season will be better. Well, it is better. And this is why Kente Maeda is my pick for AL Cy Young runner-up. Absolute dominance. That's all I can say to describe Shane Bieber's season this year with the Indians. The, he is the consensus Cy Young, and he has basically already won it. He, This is probably one of the most dominant seasons ever from a pitcher. He had 27 strikeouts in two games, which is an MLB record. I mean, he couldn't get it done in the playoffs against the Yankees, but he will become the first Indian to win the Cy Young since Corey Kluber in 2017. And I think he's everybody's pick for the AL Cy Young, including maybe even MVP. He'd be the first pitcher to do that since Clayton Kershaw. Now, my NL runner-up for the Cy Young, as much as I want him to win it, He'll be the runner-up is Jacob DeGrom of my New York Mets. He's had multiple games this year with 10-plus strikeouts. He had a game against the Marlins that I'm showing the highlights of right here with 14, tying his career high. I believe he only lost two or three of his seven starts. But he was an absolute monster throughout the entire year. He won um, back-to-back in 18 and 19. And runner-up in 2020 is not bad. Now let's see my number one pick for NL Cy Young. And the other consensus pick in the national, for the Cy Young is in the National League with Reds Hot, hot ace, Trevor Bauer. He's been controversial this year. He's been McGregor walking off the mound after strikeouts. He's had cleats that they wouldn't let him wear. But he has just been dominant. He had a seven, seven or eight inning shutout in game one of the wild card against the Braves. But the Reds couldn't get it done. And I believe this will be his first ever Cy Young. He's been an absolute monster. Now we're going on to the Rookie of the Years. Now for my runner-up for NL Rookie of the Year is Padres first baseman Jake Cronenworth. He has had a heck of a season, I believe. 20-some RBIs, four homers, and a heck of a lot of of a great defensive plays if I've ever seen him. Now, he is the favorite for this award, but I think there is one player that just beat him out, and we're going to see him just in a moment. Alec Boehm, catcher for the Philadelphia Phillies, is who I believe will be taking home the NL Rookie of the Year. Of course, last year it was an NFC East player by the name of Pete Alonzo. Don't know if you know him. Uh, but Alec Boehm has had a heck of a year. I remember he homered against the Mets in one game that I was watching. And uh, he's had a bunch of hits, a bunch of RBIs, and plenty of home runs. And he's been an excellent young catcher for Philadelphia. And that's why I think he bags Rookie of the Year. Now, my AL Rookie of the Year runner-up is 
what most people thought was going to be the rookie of the year, and that is outfielder for the White Sox, Luis Robert. I know a bunch of his cards went up in price, personally. When I went to pick up some top Series 2 baseball, I couldn't find any because that was the series that had all the Luis Robert rookie cards. But he's been an absolute beast, homering left and right and center. Just as you see right there, he's been a beast. But I think this one guy beats him out. I still have an outfielder winning the AL Rookie of the Year, but it is Mariners outfielder Kyle Lewis. He homered in his first game. Homered in his second game. Had a 10-game hitting streak going. Absolute beast. Unlike his team. His team was not a beast, but just because your team wasn't good doesn't mean you weren't good. You just ask Jacob DeGrom. But he's been an absolute monster, and he's had a monster of a season. And he will bag AL Rookie of the Year for the Mariners. Fernando Tatis is my runner-up for NL MVP. I mean, he's been a beast. He's a consensus, but I think just one guy beats him out. And Tatis has been a beast, homering left and right. He's made some absolutely nasty, filthy defensive plays. He's been the star on a young and bright Padres team. And I bet he gets it next year. All right. Now, my NL MVP is Freddie Freeman is my choice for NL MVP. And it will be an incredible story if he beats COVID-19 and then wins an MVP. The last Braves player to win an MVP was Chipper Jones back in 1999. And he was an infielder. So is Freddie Freeman. He's been homering. He's, been, he's had plenty of RBI. And I don't see a world where Freddie Freeman does not win the MVP of the National League. Who wins the AL, though? I'm about to show you. And it was between Ho the two Jose's. Ramirez just didn't make my cut. So Jose Abreu of the White Sox. He's had the best stats in the league. But there's one guy I don't think he beats out. And let me say his last name rhymes with out. But... Jose Abreu's been a beast. I just can't. I can see him winning it, but I don't think he wins it. And who is my AL MVP? Come on. Mike Trout. Mike Trout. I think he bags his fourth AL MVP. I mean, the guy hit a home run on his birthday. His rookie cards sell like crazy. There was a one this year that went for about a million dollars. But that's besides the point. His stats have been better than ever. And we only played 60 games this year. The guy is the absolute greatest player in the league right now. And he will win his fourth AL MVP in 2020. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. And happy Spooktober the... I, I think it's, yeah, the 11th. Or no, happy Spooktober the 10th. Bye.